Gavir Swarnam Vasu also OSA that is also the reservation academy. Hope you all are well during this COVID-19 pandemic situation by wearing masks and keeping distance with each other. Dear viewers, today our topic is a very challenging topic that is open ischemic contracture. Is it uh, uh, very difficult to treat? We don't think so. As because of we have any problem. So our topic is today the Buckman's ischemic contracture treated by Elizabeth. And the speaker is the one and only, the legendary Elizabeth surgeon of Bangladesh, Professor Mufakharul Barisar. I would like to request Professor Mufakharul Barisar to join us. Thank you. Good afternoon, Tanvi. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Good afternoon. Dear viewers, we have uh, two learned academic experts with us. Uh, one is uh, Professor Novikov, sir, from Kurgan, Russia. Uh, he will join in the coming part of the program. And the another one is very enthusiastic, Dr. Samsung Huda, sir, from Patna, India. I would like to request uh, Dr. Samsung Huda, sir, to join us. So welcome. Welcome to our show. Thank you, and very good afternoon to all, Dr. Samsung. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, you all know that the workman system contractor is a very challenging thing for all of the researchers. Is it possible to treat it by Elizabeth? Yeah, definitely it is possible. And we can treat it successfully by Elizabeth. Now, I would like to request uh, Professor Bapakarul Barisar to uh, share his screen with us, uh, start his magnificent presentation regarding workman system contractor treated by Elizabeth. So please, would you please share your screen with us? Okay. Thank you, Tanvir. And uh, dear viewers, and uh, today I would like to talk on a very important and very challenging topic for the orthopedic surgeon. That is Volcan, Volcan ischemic contracture, how we can treat by Ilizarov. So, you know, this gentleman from Germany, uh, 17 August 1830, uh, uh, he was born and died in 1889, 28th November. And uh, mentioned regarding this, his workman's ischemic contracture in 1881. That is 59 years, you know. And this is what he stated that paralytic contractures that develop within a few hours after injury are caused by arterial insufficiency or ischemic of muscles, ischemia of muscles. So now, if you think about this volcanic ischemic contracture, a condition which is characterized by ischemic necrosis of the The viewers were facing some sort of uh, network problem. Uh, you all know that we are facing uh, this problem every now and then. I uh, hope uh, Professor Mopakarabar is going to join us within a few seconds. The most common ethological factors we can see here neglected compartment syndrome, crush syndrome, and you can see here bleeding disorders, and as well as fractures associated with vascular injury. You can see here that I told you crush injury, prolonged external compression, internal bleeding, that is it can, uh, it can be in hemophilic patients, bones, snake bites, intravenous regional anesthesia. And you can see here, the mortgage and ediba may further compress the brachial artery and median nerve in this region. Supracondylar fractures, you can see in the right side of the humerus in children, is the most common precipitating injury. The branch of brachial artery may get impinged on the sharp proximal fragment against which it is held by lesser fibrous. Now, neglected compartment syndrome. If you do the early diagnosis and fasciotomy, then we can avoid the development of the Volkman's ischemic contracture. Regarding the treatment, it is very difficult for the orthopedic surgeons. And if you see here, in the left side, compression of the brachial artery or impeachment of median and ulnar nerves 
at the lower part of the elbow of the arm or elbow leading to contracture or necrosis of the flexor muscles of the forearm. You can see here the course of the unlined knob and the vessels. This is the unlined knob. This is the median knob. <coughs> and of course, this is the brachial artery in relation with the humerus and the radius. Now, look at the structure anatomical of the brachial artery, brachialis muscle, ulnar knob, or pronatoteris muscle, and bicipital aponeurosis. And here, the big muscles here, the brachioradialis muscles, and the median knob. So, before going to do any kind of surgery, you should have to keep it in your mind regarding the all structures of the arm and forearm. Now, I told you the causes of the this uh, volcom ischemic contracture, prolonged external pressure, that is dry dressing and cast, bleeding, uh, bleeding disorders, bounce and trauma, resulting from any fracture in the elbow region or upper arm, especially supracondylar fracture of the humerus. You can see the distal above the epicondyle. <clears throat> More common in children, fallen out of stressed hand. That's why you can explain in this way that distal fragment of the humerus moves upwards and backwards, proximal fragment sharp moves forwards and pushes median nerve and brachial artery. And humerus and edema compresses brachial artery and we can get the impeachment of the median nerve. Here you can see very nicely, it is described here, the drawing you can see here, anterior displacement of the proximal fragment pushes the nerve and the artery here you can see here what we can see later on as complications of this type, type of fracture now you can see here a b c and acute ischemia leading to necrosis leading to contracture and necrosis of the flexor muscles of the forearm especially flexor digitorum profundus and flexor, flexor policies longus. Severe cases, all flexors and all extensors are involved. Muscle tissue replaced by collagen that causes contraction. Nerve injury causes muscle dysfunction, sensory loss, and the ischemic pain. You can see here the most common forearm muscles have affected. If you look at the right side here, FDS, flexor digitorum profundus, flexor digitorum profundus. You can see a flexor pollicis longus, next most common one. And I told you that single most commonly affected this muscle flexor digitorum profundus, flexor digitorum superficialis, and of course the pronator teres, pronator muscles. Now, by looking from the outside, severe pulse in the distribution of the median and alan nav, you can see here. The in case of contracture, Volkman, if you look at the elbow, it will be flexed, elbow flexion. Look at the forearm, it is, it will be the pronation position. Whenever you see the wrist, wrist will be flexed. And if you look at the MP joint, it will be extended and thumb will be adducted and interphalangeal joint will be flexed. So these are the common signs and symptoms that you can see in case of severe palsy, in case of Volkman's ischemic contraction. Now, what are the symptoms? Type P's, pallor, palsistus of the skin, and pain, anesthesia, and paralysis of the flexors of the forearm muscles. Now, at the entrance to the flexor compartment of the forearm, lesartus fibros fibrosus fans medially from the biceps tendon. So this is very important, you can see here, this is from the bicep tendon, and beneath the lesser fibrosis, the brachial artery and the median nerve pass to the enter, pass to enter the flexor compartment. How it goes, and then if you look at the anatomy, the median nerve accompanies the brachial artery beneath the lesser fibros fibrosis and enters the substance of the pronator teres, passing in between between its humeral and the ulnar head here. Humeral and the ulnar head. 
And then you can see the compartments of the forearm are superficial volar compartment, deep volar compartment, dorsal compartment, and mobile ward of the Henry. Now, tolerance of the tissue. This is very important. If you think about the muscles, functional impairment after two to four hours of ischemia, irreversible functional loss after four to 12 hours. And if you see the nerves, functional impairment after 30 minutes of ischemia and irreversible functional loss after 12 to 24 hours. So uh, the very important complications in the Volkman's ischemic contracture are the deformities. Deformities is very dangerous in case of ischemic contracture. My type, deflexors are partially involved that I told you, particularly flexor digitorum profundus. Flexion contracture of one or more fingers which can be extended on hyperflexing the wrist and resistant pronation contracture involving either the pronator teres or the pronator quadratus. Moderate type involves most of the flexor digitorum profundus, flexor pollicis longus, and part of flexor digitorum superficialis. Neurological deficit involving median nerve, more than, more than Allah nerve is present. Deformity is intrinsic minus hand and diminished sensations in median and Allah nerve zones. So in case of severe types, all the flexor muscles are involved. Neurological deficit is very severe. Joint contacts are very marked and wasting of the forearm muscles. So now, what is it? Sequelae of combatant syndrome results in claw-like deformity of the hand, ischemic contracture of the forearm muscles and involvement of the nerves. You can see here, increased pressure compromises tissues. What are the tissues? Blood flow, you can see, oxygenation, Function loss and now some muscles vitality. And if you see the perfusion pressure in a closed anatomic space, you can see here and results in tissue and nerve damage. Now, you see this 40% of the falling fractures of the shaft of the tibia, 80% are involving the forearm bones. Children with elbow. An unstable radius fractures remain a all in JBJS. They have published a paper in 2009, and you can see we can get the compartment syndrome in Shaska type 5 and 6. This is also very important for the orthopedic surgeons. Now, whenever you are facing with the Volkman ischemic fractures, you must follow the protocol for management of this. If your skin condition is good, and if your skin condition is not good, what you can do here, you can go for neurolysis, you can do the excision of the fibrotic muscles, and good protective sensation you can get. What you'll get, you can see of a, a, a status of a extensor tendon. It is very good. You can go for tendon transfer. If not good, then FMFT for finger flexors. Extensor can be radial is longus to FDP, flexor digitorum profundus, or brachial is radius to FPL. And at the same time, you can do independent motor to FPL. And if your skin condition is not good, then you should have to go for abdominal and flap cover. So now I would like to a very simple one MCQ. Lecture in children under 10 years of age. If question arises, you can see here, tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, student's elbow, or su supracondylar fracture of the humerus, which was the most common. It's common is the B, that is supracondylar fracture of the humerus. Now, regarding the treatment, I'll go for the deformity, how to correct. Before going that, you will have to know the Elizar of law of tension and stress. Why I'm showing this? Because on the basis of Elizar of philosophy and law, that is slow mm -hmm. and speedy traction on a living tissue creates a stress which is metabolically activated 
and which stimulates histoniogenesis, that is tissue genesis, myogenesis, neurogenesis, osteogenesis, and all kinds of genesis by Pilizar of tension stress law. Now you can see this is a case of VIC of right angle of foot with deformed toes. Can you tell me, dear friends, these are the cases how you can treat these kinds of uh, deformities uh, in case of VIC? Now, if you have Elizarov in your hand, you can at least do something. Without the Elizaro, he cannot correct these kinds of deformities. See, look at this. Gradual destruction. And you just see the sole of the foot. Your foot is almost corrected. From the valgus to varus. Now, X is almost, you know, gradual sequential. You can see this is during treatment. Patient is going to remove his apparatus within a short time. Now, here you can see the three years old boy. After Balkan's ischemic contracture of the right forearm and the hand, look at this here. The four cases I, I symptoms I showed you: wrist pronation, thumb reduction, and flexion of the RP joint, extension of the MP joint. Now here you see the pronation. Uh, see the almost 90 degree. This is radiograph of the left forearm. The patient could be placed, you can see here the skin condition, contraction, and then I put the Elizaro, one ring here, see, look at this, another ring here, put in the hand, and this is, if you look at this, with hinges, and gradual destruction was applied to correct the deformities. And the radiograph of the late forearm, after four months follow-up, you can see, with hinges. This is almost, you know, when you are given distraction, your skin and muscles, nerves and vessels all are getting a stretch. And as a result, you are getting a supple hand. And look at this. After five months follow up, this is before, this is final appearance of the patient. Look at the wrist, look at the wrist and the uh, look at the hand. And this is after five months follow. Look at this 12 years old girl. Again, Volkman's ischemic contracture of the wrist and the hand that I'm showing you. Wrist pronation. This is pronation of the forearm, thumb adduction. Now, look at this interferential joint flexion. And look at the X-ray of the right side. And then what we have done? Again, Close up view of the minimum bar of fixator in the left forearm. And finally, we got the clinical appearance of the patient after four months of follow up. And this is IP joint, interphalangeal joints almost stressed, straight. And look at this six years old girl. Again, VIC of the left, you see, forearm. Muscle rotated. This is wrist pronation and uh, flexion of the wrist, pronation of the forearm, and thumb adduction. Look at this here. This is the x ray of the hand before surgery. Then you put the Elizaro in the hand and gradual destruction. Two ring constructs in the forearm. Here is one with hinges. This is the radiographic view. This is the clinical appearance. Patient to be reserved fixated, gradual destruction, follow up after seven months. So, this is, you can see the IP joint and the metacarpal joints and clinical appearance of the patient after 11 months follow up. This is the right hand, this is the left hand, just to compare this one with the uh, this one. But this is before radiological result of the hand. You can see patient is happy and uh, she can do his uh, any kind of activities with the left hand. So, dear friends, what I've shown you the difficult cases that is on the basis of evidence that I've shown you. 
the science and surgical skill of the surgeon. And of course, this is the combination of the biology and at the same time the mechanical stability of the apparatus. And by lizard of technique, at least you can do this kind of deformities of the ball quench ischemic contraction. These are the books, 92 and 93, my publications. Thank you so much. I want to convey my gratitude to this great scientist, Gabriel Abravo Vichilizaro, for giving us a new laws by which we can do lots of deformities and we can correct, we can help the people. Thank you so much for your uh, kind attention. Thank you very much, sir, for your great presentation. And uh, I think uh, any orthopedician will learn these things and overcome the workman system structure by using the uh, Elizabeth. Uh, now, I would like to uh, request uh, Dr. Samsur Huda, sir, uh, to say something regarding the presentation. And if you have any questions uh, to Professor Mufakrul Bhai, sir. Dr. Samsur Huda, sir, do please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tanvir. It was such a wonderful learning, uh, learning sir. Because in our in our state, uh, most of the cases of uh, VIC has been being treated by plastic surgeons only. We don't usually apply laser on it, giving extensive skin incisions and large fistulas are being done in small kids. So seeing this, we can do most of the cases of deformity of VIC with laser, sir. My question to you, sir, that uh, in your experience, uh, if you are correcting with laser, my first question is, uh, sir, do you? Do it completely with Elizero, or you do do also uh, get support of plus also, sir. So you are doing with complete Elizero, or you are using plus also. Sir, uh, uh, you are completely. Or do you help of plus surgeon? That that I showed you. These are all difficult cases, late cases. These are the when you are got muscles and all joints are contracted. I can go for the lizard. And at the same time, I go for the support with the help of the physiotherapist. You know, see, this is the sometimes I take the take the help from the plastic surgeon also. Okay. My second question if you are having a deformity of elbow, wrist, and uh, hand joints, do you do it in a staged way or uh, simultaneously, sir? You it depends on cases. Uh, yeah. you, you can you can you can do simultaneously in the forearm, in the wrist, and in the IP joint and MP joint. Gradually, you can go for by Lizarov. And in this type of cases, I do only the stage wise gradually by elbow, by doing the forearm, wrist, and MP and IP joints. Simultaneously, I go for. Uh, correction of the deformities in all levels and with right, waves. Right, sir. One more question, sir. Uh, in your experience, sir, uh, post correction, have you faced any cases of subluxation of joints anywhere? Subluxation, sir. So, yeah. yes, it happens whenever you don't put your hinges in the same, in the wrong position. If you put your hinges, then you can get subluxation. The beauty of Elizarov is that when you are getting subluxation or you see with the x-ray you can correct it easily that is the gradually you can do that and so That's placement true. of the hinges if you mismatch the hinge then you can get it and at the same time you can correct it also All right so my my last question sir uh, what is the rate of recurrence post correction sir rate of recurrence is there... yes over correction is always advisable in case of here if you don't do over correction a little bit 30 to 40 45 degree then you can get right. recurrence again. Okay. So, after removing or dismounting the Elizarov apparatus, it is advisable to go for vigorous physiotherapy and right. sprint test, use of sprint age. Okay. And as a result, uh, you, you can you can uh, get a very good functional activities of the hand. Okay. Right. Leg also. Thank you very much for wonderful questions, sir. Uh, already we have learned many things from this type of question. Sir, I, I have uh, one question to you, sir. Uh, as uh, yeah, you are doing it uh, gradually, uh, then uh, what is the uh, process of this gradual destruction? Is there any law of uh, uh, gradual destruction like the osteotomy uh, in case of workman's ischemic contraction? 
you can see whenever you have applied the Lizarov in the forearm and the wrist and the MP joint and the IP joint, you can go discussion gradually about two times or three times a day. Two times, three times a day. Sometimes not in everywhere. It depends your case. If you see the patient is complaining pain, then you can go for two times a day or three times a day. Sometimes, depending on the big gap, that is big contracture, you can go for four times a day. Whenever here you are not doing any kind of distraction in the bones, you are doing contraction correction by applying the apparatus in the soft tissues. That's why it depends on your case and you can go for two times, three times or four times. Even then patient complains pain, you can stop for one or two days. Then you can start again. Okay, okay. sir. Uh, um, do you do any... Another, uh, another thing I would like to tell you, when your hands are like this, contracted, you go for distraction for five or seven days and then you release your hinge, allow the patient to go for physiotherapy. Again, you apply the hinge. Again, you go for five or six days, seven days for contract distraction. Again, you stop, then exercises. Okay. These are the uh, theories. These are the basic principles for correcting the contracture in case of uh, raised elbows and uh, IP joint and MP joints. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, do you do any type of uh, Z plus C with uh, Z of distraction? Yes, that depends, also, that depends. Sometimes it is needed. You can go for Z plus C. Uh, if you need, if, if your skin is very bad, the sometimes you get a you know psychiatric. That is, the skin is very bad. Sometimes it is very difficult to go for correction of the uh, jet plastic. Then uh, uh, gradual destruction by Elizar of law of tension and stress. It gives so smooth. You know, the scar tissues become supple and, and softened by uh, applying this bizarre of uh, principle. So okay. if we do uh, Z plus C along with destruction, then uh, uh, what will be the uh, destruction rate? Uh, is it the same or uh, well, we will Depends slow the... Your, uh, I, I, I got your question. Uh, when you have done the Z plus T, and for example, when you are doing sometimes tenotomy, you know, tenotomy for the ankle. Then you have done tenotomy after two or three or four days, you could go for distraction. Uh, in jet plus, you also same. Same. So do you break, sir. A small hinges in the finger joint, sir. Because normal hinges won't adjust here. Do you use mini no, hinges no. or small hinges? Joints. A small hinge, mini hinges you have for the fingers. Big hinges you cannot put here. Okay. And uh, the wrist you can put the big hinges. Here is small hinges you have. Very little hinges. Mini Lizarov hinges. Size is very small. So Thank you, these, Thank are you the, very these are the very yeah. difficult hinges. And I, I tell you really, you can help with the Lizarov. The Lizarov principles. Right. That is law of tension and stress. This is very important. This is the basic thing. Most of the orthopedic surgeons, they don't know the law of tension and stress. Exactly. No law. Most of the orthopedic surgeons, they, they know only the Elizabeth yeah. putting words. Nothing. No. Slow and steady traction, only living tissue. You know, before Elizabeth, a lot of external fixator was discovered by the lot of orthopedic surgeons. Yeah. But they have not given the principle. Biological parameters. The principles law was given by the Professor Elizar. That's why uh, his theories and everything is still the accepted all over the world by using the other external fixated also. Everybody is following the principles of Elizar. Okay. Uh, sir, one last question, though it is not uh, directly related with this topic, but somehow it is related as because of uh, we came to know that you are using uh, Elizabeth in case of uh, peripheral vascular disease and uh, uh, it can uh, increase the blood circulation by Elizabeth. 
uh, we saw that uh, in your uh, earlier presentation. Uh, is it possible to uh, 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 apply Elizaro before Buckman ischemic contracture? Uh, and uh, can we prevent this type of Buckman ischemic contracture by applying Elizaro in the early stage of the trauma? Early age of trauma, I don't have idea. Early age of trauma, that means uh, when you are getting compartment syndrome with necrosis, these are all late cases I've shown you. Uh, with necrosis, in that case, you cannot, you don't need to go for, you know, osteotomy here. Uh, induced on eugenesis, to get the induced osteogenesis, you should have to go for osteotomy. Osteotomy and osteotomy in the bone, and then you go for destruction. As a result, you get a arterioles, venules, and a capillaries, new formation of this, and that will help in case of the late cases. Uh, in peripheral vascular disease, you know, I am doing every week two or three cases in PVD, in PVD and diabetes patient in diabetes hospital. Every week two or three cases I am doing. I tell you, this is TTT, I told you, TBL transverse technique, that is in diabetic food, I told you, already published in American journals. That's TTT, I am applied in PVD, peripheral vascular disease, in atherosclerosis. I'm telling you, this is a new thing for all diabetic patients. Most of the patients, they are suffering with atherosclerosis. Blood flow in the four, in the four regions. Popliteal artery, artery and dorsal pedis, anterior tibial artery, and posterior tibial artery. Four arteries are always involved 70%, 80%. If you do the TTT, or even then don't TTT, you do a segmental osteotomy and just you increase the vascular, just destruction, you'll get a fantastic result. Before surgery, I do the duplex, color duplex. And after surgery, two or three months, I do the again color duplex. There are a lot of changes because you have the documentation. Before surgery, you do the color duplex. You can get the how uh, blood flow of the these four vessels before it was and after doing the Elizaro surgery. That is called induced angiogenesis. And that is the beauty of Elizaro. No other, you know, vascular surgeons they cannot but but doing angiogenesis destruction angiogenesis you are getting artery this is authentic you know professor ships of i have seen he has done 480 cases of atherosclerosis now i am totally confused and i am doing this uh, surgery in diabetic hospital in bangladesh institute of health science and they are getting very good results. So this is the new thing. And thank you very much, Shamsuluda. Shotish uh, Nasari, one month back. Shotish Nasari from uh, yes, Belgaum, sir. Belgaum, sir. Yeah. In India. Yeah. I... Sir, uh, we are facing uh, network problems, sir. We cannot hear you properly, sir. Yes, sir. We cannot hear you properly, sir. Yeah, dear viewers, uh, uh, hope uh, we can hear our professor in a few minutes. So, uh, we cannot hear you, sir, properly. Uh, there is a uh, uh, yeah. I think uh, network no. sharing there. So, in the next session, can we request sir to show a demo frame for VAC all hinges? Yeah, all yeah. It will be very helpful for uh, all of us. Yeah, this yeah. complex. So I can show one demo of uh, small hinges deformity, multiple joint deformity correction like this. It will be very helpful for us. Yeah. And yeah. 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 This is a very complicated. Yeah.
Yeah, that's very important. Yeah, definitely. Dear viewers, uh, uh, we all uh, tend to know that we can apply this verb in case of Bokman's systemic compression, as well as we can apply it in case of peripheral muscular disease and as well as in diabetic food also. And uh, yeah, it has been already proved that uh, in case of diabetic food and peripheral muscular disease, uh, we can apply in Zarum and we can get a uh, magnificent result. As well as in Bokman's systemic compression, we have already shown it. Uh, in our presentation by Professor Mokakarul Barista. I uh, hope uh, all the uh, Elizabeth surgeons will love these things uh, as well as a new surgeon will be encouraged uh, to treat workman systemic contractor, a very challenging thing by the Elizabeth. I would like to thank our honorable speaker, Professor Mokakarul Barista, uh, for his magnificent presentation, as well as our honorable academic expert, uh, Dr. Samsung Hussar, for being with us. And I would like to thank Cross TV. Uh, for helping us, uh, as because of without Rats TV, we cannot arrange this type of academic program and definitely another pharmaceutical stimulated Bangladesh uh, for sponsoring our program. And the promoter will start saying bye bye to all of you and hope we will connect in the next Friday with another magnificent topic of magical Elizabeth. Till then, bye bye. You are watching Raj TV, Jagorone, Bangladesh. Please subscribe our channel.